Good morning and a warm welcome to our online offering of Sunday worship service here at Grace Episcopal Church in Alexandria, Virginia. Although public worship services have been suspended due to the coronavirus pandemic, we and the whole church are more united than ever in our common work of prayer, online fellowship and day-to-day -day ministry to all those within our community that are in need of our help and support these days. This morning, I would like to invite you to join me in praying morning prayer rite one. And I'm also glad to say that Bishop Susan Goff, the Bishop of Virginia, will join us today in offering her words in form of a sermon. For anyone who would like to follow us here this morning, you can find a bulletin to this service by going on to our website, gracealex.org, and clicking on the blue banner at the very top of the page. Also, if you're a member of our congregation, you should have received an email with a link to this bulletin. And finally, for anyone who would like to just use their own books of common prayer, Morning Prayer Rite 1 will begin on page 39. So once again, a very, very warm welcome this Sunday morning. And let us join our hearts together in prayer and worship of our risen Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord, grant us absolution and remission of our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. before his 
Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you, ha you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in praying together Canticle 4, the Song of Zechariah, which can be found on page 50. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. 
I'd like to start this reflection on today's readings with a little bit of show and tell. When I was a child, my great aunt Jo gave me this figurine of Jesus lovingly holding a lamb in his arms. I always liked this figurine, I always kept it close and had it with me anywhere that I lived, in part because it reminded me of that beloved aunt, but also because of the comfort of it. I have to admit though that I never really identified with this lamb. It looks so content and so peaceful and calm in Jesus' arms. And I was always a little too restless, too full of questions, and too ready for adventures to think of myself as this lamb. But then my husband Tom and I went to Newfoundland in the first year that we were married. And there we met sheep. Really for the first time, I'd seen them before in petting zoos, but not in the wild. And we saw sheep there in strange and dangerous places, right at the edges of cliffs, going for the grass that was over the edge, as if that grass had to be a lot more delicious than what was on top of the cliff. Sheep are crazy. They are ornery. They are stubborn. They are willful. Well, maybe I could actually identify with this little lamb after all. I certainly can today on a day that is called, nicknamed Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of this season of Easter. It's a day when we hear the sheep say, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord gives me everything that I need. The Lord gives me rest, gives me refreshment, gives me the gifts of life, and therefore I lack nothing. There is absolutely nothing more in all the world that I need. Now sheep don't seem to believe that there's nothing else that they need. They don't seem to believe that the shepherd will supply their needs. And so they get themselves into those predicaments in life right at the edge of the cliff. We human beings don't seem to believe that we have all that we need either. And that's why we get ourselves into predicaments of longing for something else that's just out of our reach. Well, Jesus comes to us today in the middle of our predicament with good news. He comes to us in the middle of our restless desire to go beyond the edges of our own homes where we've been sheltering in place for weeks and weeks and weeks now. Jesus comes to us in the middle of our restless desires to resume activity and to be a part of groups in person again. Jesus comes to us in the middle of our fears about our health, about our economy, about our church life, and he comes with good news. Now the good news he brings today takes an unexpected image in the gospel. Unexpected because although we call this Good Shepherd Sunday, Jesus doesn't talk about good shepherds. Instead, he says, I am the gate, the gate for the sheepfold. Now gates for the sheepfold open in to welcome in the sheep into that place where they can be protected protected from predators, and protected from their own inclinations to wander and be stubborn. Life is good inside the sheepfold, where there is food to eat and where there is safety. That's why some Christian art 
imagines the gate as the gateway to heaven. Jesus himself hints at heaven when he says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life, eternal life with Christ in the fullness of God's heaven where we are held in loving arms. But the reality is that that life doesn't begin after we die the way we sometimes think. Eternal life isn't just for some future in some far distant place. God's heaven is here, already here and now. It is, as Jesus said, within us and among us. Now, God's heaven is not here yet in all its fullness. God is not done with us yet. But God's presence, God's goodness, God's wonder are already here, just waiting for us to see them and glimpse them and share them with others. And so the gate that opens to let the sheep in also opens to let the sheep out. If sheep stayed in the fold all the time, they could not thrive. They need to get out to run and, and to feel the blessings of the air and of water and of good pasture. They need to go out in order to thrive. Sometimes even the shepherd needs to take the staff and drive them out so that they can be at their best. Jesus, the gate, opens to let us into the fullness of God's heaven and then opens to push us out, to send us out into the world to live the fullness of God's heaven there out in the world, in the middle of God's creation, in the middle of all of the messiness and the meaningfulness of life in community with other people. Jesus the gate opens for us to come in and to go out. And he opens for us now in this time of the coronavirus, in this time of staying home and of making sacrifices for people, including for people that we will never even meet. We may not be able to travel far from our own homes. We may not be able to go far out those doors or through the gates of our yards, but we can share abundant life with others through phone calls that we make to people who are lonely or anxious, through sending old-fashioned cards and letters in the mail, by taping messages on the insides of our windows or even on the telephone poles or trees in front of our houses, messages of encouragement that our neighbors will see as they walk by we can go out into the world and serve even now by donating food or money or by making masks and giving them to people in need. And of course we can and must do it by praying. Praying for those who are making difficult decisions right now. Praying for those who have the coronavirus, for their families, and for all who are caring for them, praying for those who have died and for those who grieve them, we can go out through the gate that Jesus is and into the world even now because love transcends all physical boundaries and all physical distancing sacrifice 
knows no limits, no boundaries, no walls. Abundant life cannot be kept down. So even as if we are as ornery and feisty as sheep in wild places, we have everything we need. As God holds us tight in powerful arms of love. And those arms, that love, will never, ever let us go. Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 53. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name forever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of thy people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calleth us each by name, and follow where he doth lead, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favour, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us together offer to God our prayers and thanksgivings. In the words of the general thanksgiving found on page 58. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfindly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.